Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snailus, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our biology MCAT playlist. In the previous video, we have discussed mitosis. Today, it's time to talk about meiosis, which is important to make gametes for your ovaries or your testicles. As you know, cell cycle consists of the interphase and the M phase. Mitosis or meiosis take place in the M phase. G1 is for growth, S is for synthesis, which means DNA replication, G2 is another growth, and then you go to mitosis or meiosis. If you remember my last video, I've told you that in mitosis, each parent cell will give you two identical daughter cells, and if the parent cell was 2N, which means diploid, the two new daughter cells will also be 2N. However, in meiosis, when the parent cell is 2N, it will give you four cells. Mitosis versus meiosis, what a clean comparison. Mitosis happens in somatic cells, but meiosis, sex cells, gametes, your ovaries and your testicles. Mitosis is not involved in sexual reproduction, but meiosis, of course, is involved in sexual reproduction. Mitosis will give you two diploid cells. Meiosis will give you four haploid cells. Mitosis has just one round of division, just one cycle, but meiosis has two rounds of division. The first one will give you two haploid cells. And then during the second round of division, they will give you four haploid cells. And that's why we call the first round of division reduction division, because we have reduced the cell from 2N into N. However, in the second round of division, it's called the equatorial division. Why is this? Because it's equal to the parent cell. Here is haploid and haploid. If you remember, mitosis had four phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. However, meiosis has two rounds of division. So how do you differentiate between the two rounds? You call the first round prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one. And then you call the second round prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, and telophase two. What does pro mean before? It's before all the other steps. It's also before the metaphase. Meta, meta means change. What do you mean by change? Alignment. You can also say meta in the middle because everything is aligned in the middle of the cell in the equatorial metaphase plate. Next, you have the anaphase. Ana means up, which means separation. You separate the two sets to opposite poles of the cell. And then the telophase, telos means purpose, the end. Yeah, the end in H1 making its own nuclear membrane and now you have separate daughter cells. If you'd like to learn more about mitosis, please watch my previous video. In prophase of mitosis, you had condensation, separation, formation, dissolution. Then you have metaphase, meta alignment, meta in the middle. Everything is aligned in the middle in the equatorial plate. Mitosis, anaphase, ana, away, ana, up, separation, separate me, split each centromere into two, separation of the sister chromatids, and then the canidocore fibers will shorten, pulling the sister chromatids to opposite poles of the cell. Mitosis, telophase, telos, the purpose, the end, which is the opposite of the prophase, the beginning. In telophase, you have disappearance of the mitotic spindle, formation of a nuclear membrane, formation of cleavage furs, and uncoiling, decondensation of the chromosomes. The parent was diploid and each daughter will be diploid because this is mitosis. However, in meiosis, the parent was diploid, but the daughter will be haploid. That was the story of mitosis in a nutshell. Remember, just one round of division. However, in meiosis, you have two rounds of division. Here's the first round, here's the second round. Everything in the first round is called one. Prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one, and then... Each one of the daughter cells will go to round two. And then you have prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, and telophase two. Prophase one is way different from prophase of mitosis because here in prophase one, we have a new phenomenon of crossing over. Look at this beautiful chromosome and this beautiful chromosome. They basically hug each other and they, they exchange pieces of the chromatin. And then you get new, which looks weird. This process explains why, out of 7.8 billion people, no one looks exactly like the other. It's thanks to crossing over, crossing over. Also, metaphase 1 is different from metaphase of mitosis. If you remember the metaphase of mitosis, look at the alignment. Look, each chromosome here has a spindle fiber, 
and a spindle fiber from both sides. However, look at each one. Oh, only from one side, and that's a huge difference. Anna means away, means separation. And then telophase, the telos, the nuclear membrane is starting to form, and then you have two daughter cells. The parent was deployed, but each daughter is haploid. And this was the end of round one. Round two will start for each one of the daughter cells. This will go to round two, and this will go to another round two. Let's just take one of them. You go to prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, telophase two. Basically, these are the same as mitosis. There is no crossing over. Each chromosome is connected to two mitotic spindles from both sides, etc., etc. The only difference between meiosis two and mitosis is what did you begin with? In mitosis, I started with 2N, diploid, but in meiosis 2, I started with a haploid, and the rest is freaking history. So meiosis started with 2N, diploid, and gave you 4 haploid cells. So if the parent cell was 46 chromosomes, each one of the daughter cells will be 23 chromosomes. Oh, but hey, metacosis, this was 46, but if we add all of these together, they are 92. Oh yeah, this is the whole point of freaking replication, doofus. Look at meiosis and the end result of meiosis. Wow. If you have noticed, meiosis started with a diploid cell, and then it gave me four non-identical daughter cells. If you actually look at them, they do not look the same. There are no similarities between any of them, and that's why you look different from your sister or your brother. And you are different from each one of the 7.8 billion people. All of this was thanks to crossing over, which took place during prophase 1. This crossing over is responsible for the genetic diversity, and this is the essence of sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction, however, gives you identical offsprings, identical daughter cells that are similar to each other and similar to the parent cell. So tell me more about this beautiful phenomenon of crossing over, which is responsible for the genetic variety. We start between homologous chromosomes. Here is a chromosome, here is another chromosome. And between the homologous chromosomes, we cross over at this intersection point called chiasma. Crossing over can be singular at one side or double at both sides. When these chromatids are aligned together, look at these four. One, two, three, four, we call them the tetrad. Please pay attention. The crossing over did not occur between sister chromatids. No, 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 no. It occurred between homologous chromosomes. Hey, give me something, give me something. But it did not happen between the sister chromatids because this will not make any difference and this will not cause any genetic diversity. It would have been like taking a tire from the front of your car and putting it to the back of your car. No difference whatsoever. This is not gonna contribute to O2 mobile diversity. Mitosis end results, on the other hand, deployed parent, deployed daughter, deployed daughter. The daughters are identical between themselves and they are also identical to the parent cell. Now let's talk about meiosis 1. We're not going to talk about meiosis 2 because meiosis 2 is almost identical to mitosis, which was discussed in the previous video. Tell me about prophase 1. You have the crossing over. Crossover between what? Between the sister chromatids? Oh, shut up. Between homologous chromosomes yielding recombinant chromosomes. These are the new creation. Next you have metaphase 1. Metaphase M for the middle. Alignment, equatorial plate formation at which the tetrads will align. Notice that each pair attached to a separate, a separate spindle fiber, unlike mitosis. Anaphase, ana away, separation, disjunction of homologous pairs not between the sister chromatids. The sisters are still together. The disjunction, the separation, occurred between the homologous pairs of chromosomes. And this is different from mitosis, because in mitosis, the sisters got separated. The telos, formation of nuclear membrane around this one and around this one, because we are getting ready to divide into two cells. Each one of the new two nuclei will contain a haploid, half of the number of the genetic material. If the parent was 46, the daughter is 23. Let me tell you about the phenomenon of disjunction, physiologically and pathologically. Normally, it occurs in the anaphase, yeah, ana means up, separation, oh, separation, disjunction. 
And this beautiful separation is responsible for Mendel's first law of segregation. Which means separation of two homologous chromosomes, each one ending in either of the daughter cells, is a random process. In other words, let's say that this is cell A and this is cell B. Cell B cannot say, oh, I am entitled to this purple chromosome with two orange pieces. Shut up, you are not entitled to anything. This is a random process, snowflake. Pathologically, when disjunction doesn't happen, we call it, guess what, non-disjunction. Oh, look at this. Instead of separating them into equal pairs, oh my goodness, here is one and here are three out of the tetrad. So instead of giving me two 23 cells, now one is 22, one's 24. Oops, let's imagine that this is an ovum. Okay, get it a normal sperm, which is 23. Now 23 plus 22 equals 45, a condition known as Turner syndrome. How about the other abnormal ovum? The other abnormal ovum is 24. Match it with a normal sperm, 23, and now you get 47, a trisomy. A condition known as Down syndrome if it's trisomy at chromosome number 21. What if the trisomy happened at chromosome number 18? This is called Edward syndrome. How about a trisomy at chromosome number 13? This is called Patau syndrome. Most excellent students only know those three trisomies, but in fact there are bazillions of these. Just open the textbook of Nelson's Pediatric and you'll be shocked. It will become clear to you that you are nothing but an enthusiastic ignoramus. Down syndrome is a non-disjunction affecting the somatic chromosome. However, this non-disjunction is not peculiar to the somatic chromosomes. It can also happen to sex chromosome. So this is 47, but it's not trisomy 21. No, it did not happen in the somatic chromosome. It happened in the sex chromosome. It's 47, and it's actually 44 plus XXY. Normal males are 44 plus XY. But this is 45 plus XXY, which totals 47. And this is Klinefelter syndrome. Some pearls for the pros. Now you know the difference between disjunction and non-disjunction. Disjunction should happen in the anaphase. Disjunction is responsible for Mendel's first law of segregation. There is another concept called gene unlinking and centimorgans. Basically, you look at the genes. Genes that happen to be close together tend to be inherited together. So imagine if you have a gene right here and a gene right here. During crossing over, since crossing over involve the other sister, okay, they stayed at the same location together. I'm with you forever. Let's imagine that the two genes were on the other sister that was involved in crossing over. They will cross over from here to here together. I'm with you forever. Okay, medicos is cool, but why do I care? Because we can use this phenomenon to measure the distance between genes on the chromosome. And the measuring unit is called centimorgan. It's like centimeter. Gregory Mendel's second law of independent assortment is thanks to the phenomenon of crossing over that happens in prophase. So, Mendel's first law depends on disjunction in anaphase. But Mendel's second law depends on crossing over in prophase. Mendel got it backwards. If you know what I'm saying, because prophase comes before anaphase. However, Mendel's first law comes before second law. Let's answer the question of the previous video. What's the difference among kinetochore, kinetoplast, kinetoplastid, and kinetoscope? Kinetochore was discussed in the previous video. This is the anchor protein by which the centriole gets attached to the centromere. Kinetoplast is a network of circular DNA inside a large mitochondrion. Where do you find kinetoplast? In a class of organisms known as kinetoplastids or kinetoplastida or kinetoplastia. And these are freaking parasites such as trypanosoma. Kinetoscope is an early motion picture device that creates the illusion of movement. Kinetic. Basically, they show you sequential images over a light source and you'll think, oh, actually Mickey Mouse is moving. No, it's just different pictures. I have an anti-cancer pharmacology course on my website, medicosisperfectionist.com. You can download it today. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to get my anti-cancer pharmacology course, my antibiotics course and my electrolytes course. You can also download my biology notes for free. Be safe. 
Stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.